What's trending? Your health. This was actually really disturbing. I, I talked about this in the last hour. We talked about it before. Uh, seven-ish months ago, actually, it was actually under that. It's June, I think. I started to adopt this more sort of, oh, one could even argue Maha lifestyle, but this existed before Maha, the sort of biohacking stuff. And I take a lot of supplements, mostly because it's it's more practical than to eat the level of food and protein and everything else that I would need to eat to get some you know, important nutrients and vitamins and whatnot. And I found a website a while ago. It's a new service by Dr. Mark Hyman, who's really big in the biohacking space, but he's an actual doctor. He's, he's you know, trained and whatnot. And he started or, or co-founded a company called Supco, which is a consumer health testing website. What they do is they have a database where you can look up a supplement a company and the specific supplement and it rates that particular product and it rates it on whether they have uh, high safety standards, whether they are doing anything innovative, all, all of these different metrics that they look at and you get a grade from A to F basically or you know, 100% to 0%. And so they've also been doing their own independent lab testing of supplements and they decided to go on to Amazon where increasingly most of us are doing almost all of our shopping because you can get pretty much everything at Amazon. And so they went and they purchased the 44 most popular supplements, meaning the supplements that were being sold at the largest numbers, the highest numbers. And they put them to the test. They sent them to accredited labs to look at the ingredients. And the results of this study are truly alarming. According to this report, 22% or excuse me, 22 out of the 44 supplements, so 50%. 50% of the supplements fail to meet their label claims. 20 of the 22 failures had 0 to 3% of the main ingredient that was claimed on the the bottle in the actual supplement. So you get, say, a creatine gummy, which was one of the products. I forget that. All the brands, by the way, are not brands you've ever heard of. And we'll get to that in a second. Had 0%. There was an NAD supplement. 0%. There was a berberine supplement that had 1% of what it claimed to have. That is, well, a fake supplement. I mean, that's effectively fake. And this is already an industry that is criticized for weak to no regulations, very few. This exposes this bigger problem that I think Amazon at least has some responsibility to address. They found in this study from SEPCO, every single overseas registered supplement that they tested failed, including six from China. They delivered none of the potency that they claim to deliver on their bottle packaging. On top of that, 17 of the 22 failing supplements that you could buy on Amazon had identical product images or descriptions with wholesale listings from Alibaba, which again kind of gives you a hint as to why this is such a total mess. They're cheaply manufactured, they're sold in bulk overseas. They're then repackaged on Amazon under, in some cases, fake brand names. So they went and looked and tried to find details on the companies that produced or manufactured the supplements that failed. They said all 13 supplements without a direct-to-consumer website failed testing. So they didn't have a website at all. They didn't have any contact information that someone could reach out to and say, hey, could I learn more about this supplement? They don't have a legitimate website. They don't have customer support. They don't appear to have any presence outside of Amazon. Their products fail every single time. How does this get onto Amazon in the first place? I don't expect Amazon is going to test every single product that gets sold on their website, right? The same way if you go to a Target or a Best Buy, 
you're not expecting them to do hardcore independent testing on absolutely everything. But don't you go in expecting some standards? Just some basic standards. Maybe it's more difficult on an Amazon when you're selling billions of products versus a Best Buy where you're selling from established brands, I guess. But if you don't have a website or customer service, why should you be selling uh, or allowed to sell anything on Amazon? It should be like the first thing on the checklist. Just do you have a website? A bit, just, just a website. It can even be like a blogger or something. But they don't even have that. To me, that suggests lack oversight from Amazon, which is dangerous. You go to a doctor, your doctor says, hey, you could use some vitamin D supplementation, especially out here in the Pacific Northwest. Your, your D levels are really low. My D levels were pretty low, and so I went on to vitamin D supplements. That's one of the supplements I took. A lot of people just go on Amazon and they'll search vitamin D supplements. You'll assume because it's listed on Amazon and, you know, quote unquote, sold by Amazon, that it's on the up and up. So what do you do? You look for the cheapest version or the second cheapest version, right? You, you don't want to get the most expensive one because it's expensive supplementation. I'm spending a ton of money on supplements. So I get it. And you end up buying from a company you've never heard of. But hey, how many times have you heard of any supplement company? And, hey, it's on Amazon. It must be good. It must be good to go. It must be legitimate. Only to then find out, nope, there's not even vitamin D in this pill. <laughs> it's just, it, it, what is it? Sugar? Well, what's in it? Or all these other ingredients that weren't supposed to be in it to that level. Like, it, that is disturbing. Now, to be clear, we're talking about it, and I looked up the study, which is at seattlered.com. I hope you'll read it especially if you know anyone who buys supplements on Amazon. None of the companies I've ever heard of, thankfully I've never heard, uh, the stuff I buy are from like reputable brands. They're not saying if you go on like what a, a really reputable brand is Thorn. They're not talking about that. Those tests, I think Supco have done in a separate report, th those are fine. So if, you've, if you know the brand, that's not what they're talking about. They're talking about all the other stuff. And unless you kind of live in this world and do your own research, what are the chances are of you knowing, like legitimately having heard of a brand of supplements? If, if you're just going for the first time, like you're not going to know that. So what role does Amazon play or should Amazon play in ensuring this doesn't happen? I don't know specifically <laughs> All that they can do, I just know that they should be able to do something. I, I don't expect them to be perfect, but I do expect them to not sell products from companies that don't have websites. That, to me, is a huge red flag, not having a website. Every company has a website, unless they're scam companies. And thankfully, I haven't seen any reports of anyone taking these kinds of supplements and then like dying or having any negative effect specifically from what's in the supplement or what's not in the supplement, but you can obviously suffer serious consequences for not getting something that you think you're taking. Your doctor says, man, your life depends on it. You need to get more vitamin D. And then it turns out you're not getting any of it, but you've been taking the phony supplement for three months. There, there's some health consequences to that. This is serious. Now, they also pointed out in this study that after they released their details, a lot of the supplements were no longer sold on Amazon. So that's good. I don't know if that's because the companies that got called out decided to pull it or Amazon did. But I would just not get supplements from Amazon unless it's really high-end supplement company that has their own page within Amazon. Or just at least do the research to find out if they have a website that doesn't end in like CH or something. You know what I mean? The, pl the best place to go, by the way, is full script. If anyone wants a little cost-saving measure. Although I think you need a doctor to give you access to it. I get most of my supplements now on full script and they're super discounted. But this is like a legitimate company and it's all legitimate stuff. But I always run everything through Subco. I become like really not necessarily nerdy like Kevin nerdy. You know what I mean? But I'm I'm getting obsessed with just checking everything like everything 
I said last segment, I was in uh, Vegas for Thanksgiving. I promised my family that lives there three hours of my time. You get you get me for three hours. You can determine which three hours you want. You're like, call my producer, have him set it up. <laughs> Just put it on my calendar. I'll send a car and I'll be there. So because I'm eating very clean and being very specific about what it is I'm eating, I almost never eat out at all now. Everything I get is very specific to my sort of biohacking needs, which I don't like saying biohacking because it seems fake, but I don't know what other term to use. So I get to my uh, aunt's house and I'm eating their dinner. I almost immediately started to feel sick. Not necessarily nauseous sick, although that ended up happening. Just I didn't feel good. Like I just, off. Yeah, just like something's wrong. And the food itself was tasty. I didn't have that much. I had some of the basics, although still, like I didn't eat bread or any of that stuff. I didn't have any pie, although I desperately wanted some. It was the first time in a long time where I really, I love pumpkin pie. But I had some of the other stuff. And it was not cooked to the way that I prepare my own food and have for the last six, seven months, which maybe doesn't seem like a big deal, but when you're now used to a certain level of quality and you cut out seed oils pretty much completely and you cut out all that stuff and you're cooking, you know, grass fed <laughs> beef and you're, you're eating, uh, out of, you know, with cooking in, in tallow, things like that. When you go and eat something that's not as clean, it doesn't feel great. And once you're attuned to how you're supposed to feel when you eat things or drink things or take certain stuff, it's just it's almost worse off because now you really are attuned to it. And then when you have a whoop on your hand or your wrist that tells you, is everything okay? Because <laughs> your body temperature just rose two degrees. You are having a, a faster heartbeat. <laughs> And your respiratory rate has increased. Something's going on. And it can tell you on the app your uh, your sort of baseline level of where you're supposed to be versus where you currently are and need to rest and, you know, do whatever. I was at 34%. <laughs> like, the next day, I woke up so bad. I was sick to my stomach. I was, like... I felt like I was coming down with a cold. I got a little bit of like a head cold started to happen at the exact same time. And it took me a while to realize it's because of this dinner I had. <laughs> Plus, the night before, I had a salad, but I ate it at a casino. So it was, again, it was not, is probably crappy ingredients. Mm -hmm. Tasted good, but it was crappy ingredients. And just, just, I felt so sick. And so all of Friday... I was just like, oh, and then I'm trying to figure out, well, how do I get better? How do I get back to feeling okay? And I swear to God, this stupid whoop thing, which I haven't taken off in like 70 days, is so accurate. So what did I do? I, t I took creatine, not from gummy form because there's no creatine in any creatine gummies, it appears. I put that in some really good high-quality coffee. Then I went to, in my hotel, they had an IV place. And I go in, I tell them what it is. Oh, you're hungover? I go, I'm not hungover. The only person in this city that's not hungover. <laughs> I do not drink. I did not have a sip of, of wine or booze of any kind. And I explain to them it's just because I had something bad for food. Just shut up. Stop judging me and poke me. And after that, I had two saline bags. They put Zofran, I think it's called, for anti-nausea, a whole bunch of vitamins and uh, glutathione, which is an antioxidant. And then within an hour, I'm like, I'm feeling good. I still kind of have a head cold. But I was like, I'm feeling great. It's so weird how all of this works. And what's sad is that for a long time, I just felt bad, but it was your normal feeling. So you don't really feel bad when you feel bad because it's your, your, your baseline. Yeah. And part of me is upset that I lived so long that way, but also upset now that I can tell. <laughs> Because I don't like how I feel when I feel bad like everybody else. It's like when you switch out a dog's food. You know, same thing. Yeah, all of a sudden, you're just like, why are you pooping so much? And it's not the kind that I can easily clean up after. What's going on here? 
All I did, I switched from chicken to turkey. Why, why is this happening, D'Artagnan? My dog's name is D'Artagnan. You got a dog? Mm-hmm. Last oh, wow. April. I know. He's going to be three in January. 